The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my own joy may be in you and your joy be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. A man can have no greater love than to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I shall not call you servants anymore because a servant does not know his master's business. I call you friends because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my Father. You did not choose me. No, I chose you, and I commissioned you to go out and to bear fruit, fruit that will last. And then the Father will give you anything you ask in my name. What I command you is to love one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. John, the man we have just heard from, and heard from in the second reading, the man who gave us the Gospels, well, gave us the, his Gospel, the Gospel according to St. John. Late in his life, when he was elderly and sick and infirm, he used to be carried in in a sort of stretcher, carried in to the people to speak to them, to speak to those who had gathered in worship and celebrating the Eucharist carried in to preach. And he was a very popular preacher. Very, very popular. And he was a very popular preacher because because what is the first and foremost reason why a preacher is popular or not? He was a very popular preacher because his sermons were, pardon? Very good. I knew you all knew the reason why. Sure, top of the class. You should be in the front pew. Because his sermons were short, and so they were. And John's sermon was really a few lines. And it was the first few lines in that first reading. As he was carried in and he spoke, my dear people, he said, let us love one another because love comes from God. And many a time and oft and always when he would preach, he would repeat those lines. And of course he was repeating the, the essence of the Christian thing, the essence of our Christian faith, of our Christian religion. I found myself, when I was thinking of St. John, I thought of another person. In fact, I thought of a few people, actually. I thought of a colleague, Father Al Reed, who is now in not such great health. And over the years, when he would preach, his sermon was very, very like that of St. John. My dear people, let us love one another because love comes from God. 
Mallory didn't preach very often, I'd say, but when he did, that was his theme, that was his message. Well, he didn't preach very often, and in some ways wouldn't be, I suppose, regarded as a great preacher in his time but by some of the colleagues who can be kind of critical enough of these things. But he certainly preached a great sermon by his life. In fact, he preached the message by his life. When there were people in trouble, when there was a death, for instance, around this district, and the one or two or a few times I found myself going to the house, who'd be there before me? I'll read. If there was trouble, and you know this yourselves, if there was trouble or difficulty or problems in particular families or houses around morning, noon, or night, and that's literally true, Al Reed would be there. He preached the message powerfully over the years, and sometimes in very dark times around here, he preached the message powerfully by his life. I think of another person, a woman, a mother, a father too, I could say, and they've reared four children. They're not children anymore. They've all flown the nest, except one. And they've all, as we would say, done well for themselves, pretty well anyway, apart from one. And this one in his 20s, it is still at home and there's no sign of him going. And over the years he's been a problem child and a problem youth and now a problem man and a problem son. He's been on drugs, he's been off them, he's been on them again and even now the parents who you would be tempted to say should throw him out but of course they won't and they haven't. And even now they live with a considerable de degree of anxiety He'll come in, will he be on the drugs, will he be off them, and over the years cause bother and trouble in that house, and the police have been called on occasions, and it's been rough and tough. And still those parents, with a great degree of unselfish love, are still loving him. And even the brother's sister have pretty well disowned him and think he's a selfish being. But yet they show him extraordinary kind of kindness and unselfishness and love. That's the kind of love that we're talking about and that St. John is talking to us about in the Gospel reading and in the first, his first reading to, in today's Mass. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Remain in my love. And then further on he says, I have told you this so that my own joy may be in you and your joy be complete. What I command you is to love one another. Now, how do you, how do I read this or how do you listen to this gospel? As something that Jesus said a long time ago and we're here this morning and we're kind of listening and we're listening to what Jesus said many moons ago. Well, that's part of the scene. Well, that's, you know, part of the truth. There's another part of the truth, of course. And the other part of the truth is more important in that this is God's word to you and me this morning. And these words about God and God being love and we loving one another are spoken, and they were spoken originally, of course, in a sort of an intimate kind of context. If someone that you knew and loved were dying, we'll say, and they were to have some last words to say to us, we'd listen very carefully. And not only would we listen very carefully, we'd be pretty well sure, in so far as we could, to do what they would ask of us. Well, it's in that kind of context that these words are spoken to you and me. It's in the context of Jesus the night before he died. And he's sort of tenderly asking and beseeching and pleading with his, his apostles to 
come into that amber and to be in that amber of God's love and to love one another. And in a way, you could visualize this as a sort of then a love letter to us. God saying that he loves us and without condition, without qualification. It's kind of interesting, of course, too. If you take the first reading about Cornelius was one of the first non-Jew to be brought into the into Christianity. And there would have been a lot of people then who would have said, well, no, maybe this Christian message was just for the Jews at the time. The whole notion of it being extended to each and every person, that for some people was a bit too much. Couldn't take it. But Jesus addresses these words on the night before he died to all, to all of us. And there are no, no one can set kind of boundaries that this person is, is in the realm of God's love and that person isn't. That would be unchristian. It would be unchristlike. And it would be quite wrong to do something like that. So Jesus tenderly and lovingly says to us, as the Father has loved me. And that was a hugely important thing in Jesus' life. His father's love as the father has loved me so i have loved you remain in my love if you keep my commandments you will remain in my love so rather than just visualizing this as the kind of poor wee priest reads the gospel at the sunday mass and we hear it as if it's a historical kind of a text this is god's word to you and me and would that it be received as such in the sense that these are God, Jesus' loving words to you. And he says, I told you this so that my own joy, joy now, may be in you and your joy be complete. What I command you is to love one another. If we, and you and I, if we want to try and kind of reach the ideal that Jesus puts before us of loving one another, if we want to practice this kind of sermon of St. John, or indeed I'll read in his life, or that mother or father I mentioned. That's mighty stuff. That's great, great unselfishness. That's great love. If you and I want to be like that in some sense, we need help. We certainly need help. That's great, great unselfishness. I would humbly suggest that as we pray our Eucharist this morning, that we ask God's help. We ask God's help to abide in his love as Jesus asks of us, to remain in his love and for the grace and the help and the strength to practice the one great commandment, what he asks of us, to love one another. Amen.